about how fossils help verify time, they also help verify the existence of a new species. However, there's another process known as reproductive isolation, which does very much the same. We can age the living species now through DNA analysis, and we can actually verify if they are becoming a new species or had a common ancestor, very similar to fossils. First type of isolation is known as behavioral isolation, isolation caused by differences in courtship or mating. Here you can see on the left hand side, a west meadow lark and an east meadow lark, which is actually found in Montana. They've isolated from each other thousands of years ago based off their song. And so because their song is different, they are no longer mating together. Another type of barrier is known as geographical isolation. And this in turn will cause two new species to arise, whether it's a mountain range, a river, or a dry lake bed. For example, the northern spotted owl up in Northern California versus the Mexican spotted owl down in Mexico. They used to be one type of owl. For some reason, the owl flew over or got caught over into Mexico and then never came back. That population eventually separated and the DNA is physically different now that they've become two new species. Another type of reproductive isolation is known as temporal isolation, which is timing. So here the Fowler's toad, which is very similar to the American toad, have separated in species by the mating time. So the Fowler's toad will mate in the fall only, and the American toad will only mate in the spring. Same can be seen in Papua New Guinea and all the kingfisher birds as well, deriving new speciation. Now, a lot of times with isolation, we actually come up with what's known as convergent evolution. If you have animals such as the marsupials, which are organisms that can carry their young in a pouch versus give live birth, like the placentals, the marsupials are found in Australia, and they look very, very similar to the placentals that are found in North America. However, they are completely unrelated. Another type of evolution is what's known as divergent evolution. So di means two in Latin. Fox ancestor eventually gave rise to the mainland fox. And some of those mainland foxes got caught on a seaweed raft and taken out to Catalina Island, where it became a whole new species known as the Catalina fox. So one relative eventually forms into two, very similar to disruptive selection. Co-evolution or sorry, co-evolution is when two or more species actually evolve in response to changes in each other. So the classic example is on the right hand side, the acacia and the acacia ant. The acacia tree provides a home and a food source for the ant. The ant in turn actually protects the plant from invading predators and also protects the plant from invading plants. Almost like a symbiotic relationship. They're evolving together, co-evolution. You also have this other amazing evolutionary trait, which is known as evolutionary armed race which is more of a predator-prey dynamics. The classic example we use in evolution is the murex versus the crab. The murex formed a very thick shell with very long spines. The crab, in response, grew stronger claws and a more powerful jaw. As the spikes increased, so did the claws strength and the um, jaw's ability. Hope you have enjoyed your online lecture about fossils and reproductive isolation. Feel free to listen to this lecture again and write down any questions you have. We will be discussing those comments at the beginning of our next class. Mahalo.